Consumer confidence ticked higher in May after three straight months of declines, but consumers are still wary, still anxious about the future here. With interest rates high, many Americans turning to buy now, pay later to help pay for some of those everyday essentials. 39% of U.S. adults have used at least one of these services at checkout, according to a bank rate survey. Now, the U.S. is putting protections in place to regulate buy now, pay later platforms, more like credit cards. So, how will this help protect vulnerable consumers? Joining me now, we've got Sebastian Semietkowski, who is the Klarna co-founder and CEO, plus our very own Julie Hyman here with us for the conversation. So, Sebastian, first and foremost, and we, we threw a lot at you there out the gate, but when you think about how the consumer is being defined right now, we've seen this move from the consumer is resilient to the consumer is generally healthy to the consumer is stretched. How would you define the consumer based on what you're seeing at Klarna? Well, I think it's almost interesting because like one of the key elements of the buy now operator products that we offer is zero interest. And so to some degree, we're seeing, you know, a continuous acceleration of our growth and, and preference among U.S. consumers due to the fact that actually from that stretch, a lot of that stretch comes from the higher interest rates on the credit cards and other lending products, right? And actually, to some degree, buy now, later becomes a more attractive offer. So it's slightly difficult to distinguish, like, what is, you know, are we maybe seeing a stronger growth and a stronger sentiment among our consumers than what you see in general in society due to that fact? Well, and Sebastian, we just showed some figures on the screen that your default rates are still very, very low. I do wonder if you all have had to make any adjustments in how much um, credit you are, you know, issuing out there. Are you approving fewer buy now, pay later loans as you are getting more folks who are applying? And, you know, are, are you seeing a lower quality uh, of credit consumer who's trying to apply? It's a great question. Look, I think a lot of things that are not really understood about buy now, pay later, the durations we issue are so short, they're 30 days. Uh, the balances are $150 compared to a credit card of $6,000. We don't offer revolving, which is how most people build up the significant parts of debt. And so, and it's fixed installments. So the fact is that like the losses are always lower. And when we want to change underwriting uh, methodology, we do it in real time and more than 50% of our balance sheet are underwritten according to new standards in just 60 days. So the ability, agility to adopt to macroeconomical changes is much, much, much higher. So, so Sebastian, uh, if, if I, so, sorry, to interrupt, so I just wanted to pick up on something you just said. So I guess what I'm asking is, have you changed your underwriting standards this year as the months have gone on, you know, ha because of what you're seeing out there? No, I mean, we made the major changes already back in 2022. And since then, we've actually rather seen you know slight relaxation of underwriting in more recently because we see that our populations are doing really well losses are 20 30 percent below industry standards and again the good thing is we get so fast feedback loops right so if we would see even a slight increase in losses that we would attribute to macroeconomical shifts then we could also make changes much faster you know one of the pieces of data that we continually track is coming out from the conference board, came out from the conference board today here. And within the confidence, confidence survey data, they talk about the number of people that are tracking a possible resurgence in recession and the concerns around that. As it relates to Klarna, you know, what are the utilization levels, the utilization rates that you would kind of compare now versus the past two and, and kind of how does that measure up? Um, I think it is actually has been on the improving side. I was more concerned around Christmas time, to be fair. I felt that like uh, when I was looking at consumer sentiment in the US, I wondered how much of the US sales of Christmas was driven by, you know, a tough discounting by the retailers as, as opposed to like sentiment. My impression in the line, our impression looking at our numbers for the last six months is not that you're seeing that worsening trend that you read in other places in media and so forth, right? So we're not seeing that. But again, I'm not entirely sure to what degree it's basically also consumers choosing Klarna and of that of that purpose because they see us being a more attractive product in a higher interest um, market. Sebastian, I do want to ask you about that CFPB new sort of rule um, ruling, if you will. Um, I know in a blog post you guys talked about that you didn't think it was necessarily applicable, these credit card standards for buy now, pay later companies. And I wonder what you think the biggest sort of misapprehension is about buy now, pay later versus credit cards. What do you think maybe regulators aren't understanding and what do you think maybe consumers don't understand? Well, I think first of all, it's like 
it's not like it's entirely unregulated. What it is, it just falls into the same type of regulation that your electricity bill and your phone bill and other things like that have been. And the reason we have never been concerned with potentially, you know, over extending yourself on your carrier bill to the same extent that we're worried about your credit card is it doesn't charge interest rates. You pay it back, back very quickly and, uh, you know, in, within 30 or 60 days. And the exposure, I mean, the average order value may be $150, $100. And that's exactly the same for the type of credit that we issue. So it is a, um, a more healthy form of credit. It's a better alternative to using credit cards. And, and that's where sometimes it gets misunderstood. In the, but with that said, at the same point in time, we welcome these changes uh, that the CPB suggested because there are basically good standards that anyone lending money should apply, in our opinion, uh, about making sure there's good consumer protection. I'm not an anarchist. I don't believe that like, you know, a market should operate without any rules. So I think there's good to have some rules and it also makes sure that like every player in the market is is behaving appropriately and with the best interest of the consumer. So there's a balance there. But I think, again, what's critical to us, we need more competitive uh, credit card and banking products. We need, that's why we're seeing excess profits in the banking industry. We need more competition and we need products that are healthier for consumers that are easy to use and easy to also onboard. And that's been the problem. It's been too hard to switch, which is why we're seeing the excess profits. And so when you start introducing a lot of friction, the downside you have, you may try to do that to protect consumer interest. Uh, and, uh, but at the same point of time, you're also reducing competitiveness in the market. So there's a, it's a tricky balance there. Um, Sebastian, I also switching gears once again, I wanted to ask you about a new announcement you guys made about cutting down your sales and marketing spend um, in the first quarter by 12 percent. You did that in part through the use of AI, um, you know, basically internally you're creating AI generated images and such for some of your campaigns. And I think this is interesting, not just Klarna specific, but sort of the ripple effect that AI is having on say ad agencies, for example, and other, the ecosystem in ways that we don't necessarily understand quite yet. No, exactly that, right? And that's why we, I mean, because we already made an announcement that got quite a lot of attention back in Jan, Feb, around the fact that, you know, as a consequence of our AI customer service chatbot, uh, we had had a significant reduction in errands that were handled by uh, agents about 70% of all of our errands are handled by that. And that meant that about 700 jobs of a reduction of need of Klarna. Now, again, these people were employed by companies that employed 200,000 people. They were in the short term, basically work for other clients of those customer service companies. But in the longer run, it is obviously going to have implications for those kind of jobs. And we felt that we wanted to encourage politicians and society to think about this practically and not hide the fact that it will have implications on those kind of jobs. And that, you know, we think society should take some careful consideration about what to do about that. I think this this announcement is similar in the sense that we see that it will have implications on freelancing jobs in, in photography, in, in copy, in creative, in translations, not to say the least. And we want again to share because you get a lot of noise, you get a lot of like nice announcement online, you see something on X, but then you realize like it's a nice demo, but it's hard to put in practice. But we are starting to see what we can actually hear. And here are some examples and metrics of how we've actually put it to practice. It's actually working. And in this case, about $10 million of savings generated through uh, being able to use the technology that way. Do you anticipate on top of the $10 million in savings that you're talking about here, cutting the sales and marketing spend by 12% in Q1 2024, that you would look to this technology in other parts of the business and that it could also impact the overall headcount makeup for Klarna? No, absolutely. I mean, we've, we have, and we've said so internally as well. Since August, September, we stopped hiring. So um, we are, and as a tech company, we have an attrition rate that's kind of natural, about 20% leave every year, which is kind of typical for tech companies. So that means if we stop hiring, we shrink as a company by 20% on an annual basis. And that's what we've been seeing. So we, we are shrinking. We're going to be 20%, at least 20% smaller uh, in the next six months from when we did this six months ago when we stopped recruiting. So that's definitely the case. I mean, again, I am a big believer that what we're going to see is a kind of a singularity moment in business where there will be businesses who at the core have learned how to apply these technologies in order to create businesses that move at a 10x speed to uh, the incumbents. And those businesses will start emerging and accelerating ahead of a lot of the competition. And in my opinion, it's my responsibility to our employees, to our shareholders, to our customers, to uh, you know aspire to be one of those companies and use those technologies in such a fashion 
Um, and so that's what we're trying to do. And we think that's definitely think. I think that singularity moment is maybe six to 12 months away when we will start seeing those truly AI companies uh, accelerate ahead of competition in different sectors and industries. Some really comprehensive thoughts there and strategy on both the corporate front as well as the consumer front. Sebastian Simikowski, who is the Klarna co-founder and CEO, and our very own Julie Hyman as well here. Thanks so much. Thank you.